Hello, my name is Philip Bloom, and today I'm going to be looking at the Fujinon MK cinema lenses on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, a really lovely, powerful camera that shoots really lovely images. And I won't be needing this. For the first 17 years of what is now actually my 30 year career, I was using shoulder mounted cameras, beta cams, ENG style cameras. I had nice lenses, well actually I only had one lens, a nice zoom. It was like a 20 times zoom with a two times extender. Had fantastic mechanics and it looked terrific, smooth operation, wonderful. When I moved on to DSLRs and large sensor camcorders, I wasn't able to have glass anything like what I had on my ENG cameras because the sensor on the beta cams was two thin inches. It sounds really small, it is small in today's terms. Back then it was just the sensor we had in the cameras. It was really, really standard. But the thing is with our camcorders, we're looking at Super 35 and you cannot use those lenses on a Super 35 mm camera. You're gonna need lenses which project onto a much bigger area, the bigger sensor, and therefore are going to need to be much, 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 much bigger and much, 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 much more expensive. And that's why I tend to use stills lenses for these cameras. The problem is they're designed for taking photographs, not for video, so they have a number of issues, mainly down to their mechanics. Manual focus tends to be a real pain, often with a really short throw. So trying to keep things in focus, which is actually a very important thing, actually quite difficult when it comes to the large sensor camcorders, can be a real challenge. Lots of lenses that we use don't keep the focus in the entire range. So you're zooming around and it keeps going in and out of focus, not good. And changing our exposure is a pain because most of the stills lenses do not have smooth apertures. In fact, most of them don't have apertures on the actual lenses. You control it through the cameras, which you probably know. And the finest you can get in most of these cameras is a one third stop increment. So no smooth iris changes. So I kind of got used to these issues. Well, not really. I kind of just put up with these issues because I don't really have a choice. Cinema glass being just too expensive for the sort of stuff that I need. And that's where these come in, the Fujinon MK cinema lenses. The first time I used these lenses was in December 2016, when Fuji asked me to make a video for them using the wider of the two lenses, the 18 to 55. And I did that using the Sony FS5 camera because these are E-mount zooms. A few months later, I made another video for Fuji because the second zoom came out with the 50 to 135. So now almost two and a half years after that first experience with them, am I using them? Yes, I use them all the time across loads of different cameras. Yes, E-mount cameras, so Sony FS7, FS5, and also a lot on the Kinefinity cameras because they can also have an E-mount, they're all switchable, and I've got some fantastic stuff using those cameras too. I then heard that MTF Services, a company who make lens mounts, and I've been using them probably about 12 or 13 years now, had actually made a mount, not an adapter, a mount for these lenses for micro four thirds. You can't get an adapter to go from E-mount to micro four thirds. The problem you got is physics. The micro four thirds flange distance is bigger than the E-mount, so it doesn't work. Hence, you actually have to change the mount on the lenses themselves. So that brings us onto this camera here, which is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I will be calling it the pocket 4K for now on because it's too much of a mouthful. It's a very powerful camera. It does produce really gorgeous looking footage. Blackmagic have always had a nice looking image but have been hampered by other issues. One of the big ones is they're not very good in low light but this camera actually does work 
really well in low light because there's a dual ISO sensitivity. And whilst it is micro four thirds, it is a larger sensor than you're used to on a lot of those micro four thirds cameras. It's 1.85 times crop. So let's go through what makes these lenses so good. First off, the optics. They're the same optics you get inside the much more expensive Cabrio cinema lenses that they make, which are really, really good. So that is, of course, incredibly important. And then there's the weight. Each one is under a kilo, about 980 grams, that's 2.16 pounds, roughly. And that's terrific because that is about the same weight as a Canon 24 to 105. And then there's the beautiful mechanics. Let's start at the front of the lens and work our way back. Stills lenses have that really short focus throw, which makes it really hard to keep things in focus. Most cinema lenses have a 300 degree focus throw, which is actually too much for a single operator unless they're using a follow focus. The Fuji's though have a rotation of 200 degrees, which is actually the right middle ground. It is still a big rotation, so you still have fine control and you can go through the entire range of the focus without having to use a follow focus just by having your hand on the barrel. One more thing about the focus is these lenses do not breathe. Other zooms can breathe, stills lenses, a lot of them, most of them breathe. That's where you're changing focus from one point to another and it looks like there's a slight zoom. These lenses do not do that. Another big feature of these lenses is their parfocal. So when you've got your focus, no matter where you are in the range, it will keep that focus. To make sure it's parfocal, you do need to set your back focus using the lever here and a back focus chart. Zoom in, adjust it until it is absolutely perfect and you will be completely parfocal. It's also a constant aperture. There is no change of exposure, no matter where you are in the zoom range. And then there's a lovely smooth iris for your exposure changes. On the end of the lens, there is a macro dial, so if you want to get a little bit close on your lens, you can. This is Bert. Hello, Bert. On the Sony E-mount cameras, the FS5 has a 1.5 times crop. So that makes the 18 millimeters give you a field of view, full frame equivalent of about 27 millimeters. With the 1.85 times crop of the Pocket 4K, we're looking at about 33 millimeters, so not too bad. On the long ends of the lens, on the FS5, you're looking at about 202 millimeters, full frame equivalents. But on the Pocket 4K, you're looking at 277 millimeters, full frame equivalent field of view. It is a shame to lose stuff on the wide end because it is important to have that wide end, but there is that big gain on the end of the telephoto. I've been very happy about the footage that I've been able to get using these lenses with this camera. It's a very powerful combination. It's not just the footage itself, it's actually using them. It's a total joy using these compared to using your stills lenses. It's actually very hard to go back to stills lenses after you've been using these. So now I have an issue because I do use E-mount cameras and I have my Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Do I have E-mount on them or do I have the Micro Four Thirds? So uh, does that mean I have to get two more lenses?